Welcome to Fun with Annuities with your host, me, Stan the Annuity Man, America's annuity agent. Can annuities be fun? Can contractual guarantees be fun? Absolutely they can. Find out the brutal facts about annuities with no sales pitches or high pressure nonsense. Just the brutal and factual annuity truth, which is all you need to hear. Let's have some fun with annuities and let's have that fun start right now. Welcome to Fun with Annuities, the number one annuity podcast on the planet. I'm your host, Stan, the Annuity Man, America's annuity agent, licensed in all 50 states, also the top independent annuity agent in the country that represents every single carrier out there, pretty much. So if you're looking for the highest contractual guarantees, you can come to me and me only for that. Now let's get to today's topic, uh, which is a really hot one. And for those uh, people that are listening to me on the, the podcast platforms, Spotify, iTunes, etc. Um, I'm wearing this red sweatshirt that the people on my Fun with Annuities YouTube channel is w- watching right now with the red hat because this is a hot topic. And the topic is why you should take a closer look at income riders. You know, income riders are kind of the hot pr- you know, product attachment that's sold in the annuity industry. And by the way, uh, for the people that are watching this on the uh, Fun with Annuities YouTube channel, I mean, you're watching this on the Annuity Fun Cam in the Will Do Not Might Do studio, and our saying here at the Fun with Annuities podcast is live in the reality, not the dream. What's the reality? Contractual guarantees. That's the reality. The dream is the hypothetical, theoretical, back-tested, hopeful agent. Unicorn chasing the butterflies! Nonsense sales pitches that you hear all the time. And income writers, unfortunately, are part of that kind of crap sales pitch that's flying across the country and on you know bad bad chicken dinner seminars and bad radio ads and bad TV ads, etc. But I'm going to clear all that up because I'm Stan the Annuity Man, America's annuity agent. So let's get right to the topic of income riders. First of all, what in the heck is an income rider? First of all, an income rider is not even an annuity. So you can't say, well, well, Stanley new to me, I don't want to buy anything but an income rider. I just want to buy the income rider. You can't. An income rider is an attachment to a policy that is a contractual guarantee primarily for income. Now, that attachment, you don't have to put on the annuity. And there's only a couple of types currently that the majority of income riders are attached either to variable annuities or fixed indexed annuities. Now, I don't sell variable annuities, have nothing against them, but I don't sell anything that has the potential to go down because my saying is you own an annuity for what it will do, not what it might do, and the will do is contractual, which means we're not gonna lose a penny, which means I only sell fixed annuities. Are we clear, nod your head. Now, the other thing about income riders, when you attach them to um, index annuities, typically and historically, the guarantees are higher, the contractual guarantees are higher than when you attach those same types of income riders um, to variable annuities. Now, stop for just a quick second here. Stan the Annuity Man, America's Annuity Agent, has written a book, Easy to Understand Owner's Manual, about 50 to 60 pages long. You can read it quickly. But it's Income Writer's Owner's Manual. If you go to theannuityman.com, I will send you a copy for free. No obligation. No one's going to call you and, and, and uh, interrupt your dinner or show up at your doorstep trying to sell you an annuity. I'm just going to educate you on that. And by the way, if you do want a quote, you can get a quote on income writers at theannuityman.com. But back to the point of what an income writer actually is. It's an attached benefit to a policy at that you choose to attach at the time of application, and you typically attach that income writer to a variable or indexed annuity, fixed indexed annuity. Um, in my world of contractual guarantees only, um, when we sell indexed annuities, we primarily sell them to deliver the income rider. We have found that the index annuity is, a, is a, an efficient um, and cost-effective way to deliver the income rider guarantee. We could give a rip about the pie-in-the-sky, back-tested, nonsense sales pitches of the index options. Just, just to go back a little bit and to educate you, so you don't believe the hype, as the rapper says. Um, <clears throat> indexed annuities were put on the planet in 1995 to compete with CD returns. That's exactly what they do. That's good. It's a principal protection product. It's not a security. It's a life insurance product issued at the state level. But we have found that the best way to attach income riders is to fixed indexed annuities. So that's the good news. Now, getting kind of to the 
to the point of what is an index annuity, remember the two questions I've all, always asked people, and if you're listening to me for the first time, I mean, this is, this is the, uh, the shocker of all shockers. And if you're an agent, write it down. Question number one, what do you want the money to contractually do? Question number two, when do you want those contractual guarantees to start? So under those two question scenario, um, and I also have an uh, acronym called PIL, P stand for, stands for Principal Protection, I stands for Income for Life, L stands for Legacy, and the other L stands for Long-Term Care. Income riders far, fall under the I of P-I-L-L, which is Income for Life. Income riders are lifetime income products. They pay you for the rest of, life, rest of your life regardless of how long you live. There's no ROI until you die. If you live to 150, they're on the hook to pay, they meaning the annuity company, okay? But attached to a, a policy, it's a separate calculation. So when you attach it to, say, an indexed annuity, it's a separate calculation. Now, for the people that are driving down the road in their Lamborghinis and trying to figure out what an income rider is, I'm going to do a visual for you. Draw a line down a blank sheet of paper. Well, for the people watching me on the, on the phone with the annuity, annuities YouTube, I'm drawing a line with my hand down a blank sheet of paper. Right-hand side is the income rider side, okay? Left-hand side is the accumulation value side. For variable annuities, the accumulation value are the mutual funds or the separate accounts. They call them separate accounts. I call them mutual funds. For indexed annuities, that's the index option strategies. That we don't know what it's going to be, but the agent promises you market returns. You're never going to get it. It's a CD return. But that right-hand side is the income rider side. And it's going to, it's a separate calculation when you get your statement, and it's going to grow by a specific percentage. Typically, that's how they're structured until you turn on the income. And when you turn on the income stream, you're going to base your income on that amount on the right-hand side of the ledger, that income rider side. Now, I know the sales pitch out there is that, well, if the left-hand side is higher than the right-hand side, then you can choose one of the da 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 that's garbage, okay? Annuity companies attach income rider or want when you attach an income rider to, to a policy, the annuity companies like it, for lack of a better phrase. Because the income rider side is always gonna be higher than the accumulation value side. Why is that important? It's important because you can't cash out the income rider side. Okay, it's it's monopoly money and a phantom account that can only be used to calculate your first lifetime income payment. Period. End of story. Now, that's kind of where the weird sales pitches come in when people say, well, I can get you a 7% return or an 8% return or a 7.2% return, Mr. Mr. Johnson. Uh, and that's the agent talking in some weird voice. Listen. Jimmy Carter's not in office. He's building houses in Georgia. Hopefully, he's still alive at the time of this taping. The point is, there's no genius at an annuity company that's figured out how to, how to create a 7% yield out of 1% 10-year treasury notes. Hello? Now, is it contractual? Yes. But you can't peel off the interest of an income rider. You can't cash in an income rider. And you can't transfer the total of an income rider. So if you put $100,000 in and it's growing by 7.2% on the income rider side, stop. It's not real money, okay? It's, it's Monopoly money, Phantom account, and it's growing by 7.2%. In 10 years, that $100,000 turns into $200,000 contractually, and you can take the income from that and determine from that amount. That's how an income rider works. But you can't cash it in. Now, income riders also come with fees. Obviously, annuity companies have the big buildings for a reason, as I always say, and they have the big logos on the plane. But the fees from the income rider do not come from the income rider side of the ledger, that right-hand side. It comes from that accumulation value. So the fee is taken out of that accumulation value annually and for the life of the policy. How about that? But who cares? If we're buying the income rider for the right reasons, for income later, okay, then then who cares? Because that is a net transaction to you. That's a transfer risk. That's a lifetime pension. That's what an income rider is. It's a lifetime pension that's flexible. Now, let's go backwards a little bit, back to the two questions. What do you want the money to contractually do? When do you want those contractual guarantees to start? There are two products that fit into what I call income later. So your answer is, I need incomes, down, and I need income to start down the road. Okay, great. Two products, deferred income annuities and income riders. Now, when you... And I talk, go to, Stan, go to the annuity man and schedule a call, 30 minutes at the top. You can just book a call with Stan. You're going to get me. And I ask you those two questions, and you give me that answer, which is I need income, and I need income down the road. That's an income later quote to me. 
in the Stand the Annuity Man America's Annuity Agent world, and I'm going to quote both deferred income annuities and income riders to find the highest contractual guarantee for your specific situation. The other thing, too, income riders can be used in non-IRA accounts and IRA accounts. So yes, for all you advisors and agents and masters, master of the universe, never put annuities out of an IRA stand. That's crapola, okay? Yes, you can put an income rider inside of an IRA or inside of a Roth IRA. And so when, the, when you take the income, you're going to pay taxes on the income at ordinary income levels because everything coming out of your traditional IRA is taxable at ordinary income levels. If it's in a Roth IRA, it's tax-free. Okay? Got it? And if it's in a non-qualified account, it's tax at ordinary income le levels. Last in, first out, gains first. That's all the tax advice you're getting from Stan the Annuity Man because otherwise... I don't give tax advice. I mean, you need to go see a CPA or a tax lawyer, but that's the basics of an income rider. Now, one of the things that people always say, well, which one's better than the annuity man? Is it a deferred income annuity or is it an income rider? You know which one's better? Which one's better is the highest contractual guarantee is <laughs> which one's better. But they are two different products. Deferred income annuities and income riders solve for what I call income later, which is income down the road. You know, Stan, I want income in five years or seven years or 10 years or 12 years, whatever. I want it to start then. Um, the difference is just how they contractually get there. They both provide contractual guarantees. They both pay a lifetime income. They both, you can't never outlive uh, the income stream. They're both transfer risk products. They're both pensions, okay? They can be set up single life, joint life, whatever, however you want to customize it. Um, but which one's better? They're different, okay? Deferred income annuities are very simplistic. It's an irrevocable uh, contract. You're going to get your money back, but you're going to get it with payments. One of the things I like about income riders and why you need to get my book and run quotes and talk to me about them is they're flexible. And what do I mean by that? Stand the annuity man, America's annuity agent. Flexible means that you still control the asset meaning that you could get to the to the desired end of the line to turn on the income stream and say, you know what, I don't want to do that. Let's not do that. Or you could say, I want to defer it farther out. Or I want to start the income sooner. Or I want to start, start and stop the income. You can do that. Income riders are flexible, meaning you know if you change your mind or things change in your life, you don't have to turn on that income rider. Now, yes, you've been paying for that that income rider guarantee, but I like the flexibility because obviously, and I'm going to tell you something you already know, we live in a pretty volatile world that's have, that's ever-changing. Nod your head. Absolutely. So income riders still provide the contractual guarantee. You still can, I can tell you to the penny what your contractual guarantee will be two years, four years, five years, seven years, nine years, whatever down the road for planning standpoint, but you don't have to turn on the income stream. Period. I mean, I think that's I think that's a, a positive that not many people realize about income riders. They're flexible, and like I said, they can be used in both IRA and non-IRA. Um, the other thing that that is sold improperly. Let's just start there. Is here's the bad chicken dinner seminar pitch. Uh, you get an upfront bonus of 10%. You get market growth with no downside, and you get lifetime income, and you get free long-term care. First of all, that's garbage. That's the bad chicken dinner seminar pitch. Yes, some index annuities have upfront bonuses, but you know that's candy for the stupid is what I call that. That's that's just part of the overall contractual guarantee that there's not philanthropists at annuity companies waking up in the morning going, you know what, I think I'm going to give away money today to the people that I love and don't know. No, there's no one like that. It's just part of 100 pennies in the dollar is part of the overall contractual guarantee. And when we quote it, we're quoting every single writer out there with or without bonuses you know, whatever. Um, so that doesn't matter. And then the, the other part of the pitch is you know, market upside with no downside. Wrong. Index annuities are CD products. Um, and But then here's the best one when they say free long-term care. Bah, rah, dah, rah, whatever. No, you want no. Uh, that's not it. Long-term care is a health insurance product, um, not a life insurance product. And annuities are life insurance products. What the agents are talking about when they pitch you this, free long-term care, it's not long-term care. Long-term care is a healthcare product. If you really want to dig into long-term care, I can refer you to the number one long-term care person on the planet. He's a good friend of mine, and he shoots it straight just like I do. But what the what they're talking about and what some but not all carriers offer is what's called confinement care or nursing care enhanced benefit um, coverage if you get sick or can't do two of the six 
um, daily functions of life. It and those are you know feed yourself, clothe yourself, bathe yourself. You know if you can't do those, life stinks anyway, and you're going to live an average of three years and a maximum of seven. Period. But with some of the income riders, not all, um, I would say right now about twenty to twenty five percent of all income riders have what's called a guaranteed uh, confinement care enhanced benefit coverage. So that if you cannot qualify for long term care, then this is a guaranteed issue product. So if you're smoking, a, you know, twelve cartons of Lucky Strikes without the filter, and you're and you're chasing that down with a bottle of Jack Daniels, neat, <laughs> then you qualify uh, because you're not going to qualify for regular long term care. The the one thing I do have to say about that is, if someone ever says to you, buy this index annuity with this income rider for for long term care, even though well, I just explained it's confinement care, never ever 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 cash in your traditional long-term care coverage for this confinement care type benefit. In a perfect world that Stan the Annuity Man America's annuity agent wants to live in and wants you to live in there with me, in a perfect world, income riders that offer these confinement care benefits should be used as supplemental coverage, not primary coverage. So yes, it's guaranteed, but because there's no underwriting and there's no test and no blood work and no nurse to show up, nurse ratchet showing up at your house to take the blood, um, you know, it's, as I say in the South, this, co this coverage is when you get sicker, you get your money back quicker. That's really what it is. That doesn't mean it's bad, but what happens is they'll double that income stream. So let's just say, as an example, you're getting $10,000 a month in income, or let's, let's be more rational. Let's just say you're getting $4,000 a month in income from the, from the income writer. Okay, and you qualify for the confinement care. You've proven to the carrier, and we've helped you prove that that you 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 qualify for the enhanced benefit. Typically, they'll double that payment. So, in other words, if it's four thousand dollars a month, it's eight thousand dollars a month, and it's specific. Most carriers are now at the point, not all. Most carriers they'll pay that doubling um, amount for five years. Why? What did I just say? If you if you qualify, you live an average of three and a maximum of seven. Okay, you're not going to beat the annuity company. You're not going to beat the life insurance company. You're certainly not going to beat any type of long-term care coverage. But just remember, long-term care, that, that phrase is a health insurance product. Confinement care benefits, enhanced benefits attached to income riders. That's a life insurance product. That's guaranteed issue. That's fine. It's it's if you want to, you know, if you want to have that. But I personally I wouldn't shop for that. In other words, I would go into the the income rider quote and say, I want the highest contractual guaranteed income rider quote. And if just, oh, by the way, there's an enhanced benefit, confinement care benefit attached to that income rider, hey, fantastic. But I, I, I'm not sure I would lead with it unless it's just that important to you to check off that box. But just remember, it's guaranteed issue, meaning it's not perfect coverage. Anytime they're giving something away for free, it's not perfect and it's not great and it's certainly not as good as traditional long-term care. So let's talk about the fees again. Let's go over the income rider fees. Most, and they're all different, of course, and the annuity companies are all different. Um, let's just say most income riders attached to uh, indexed annuities are around the 1%. It could be a little bit more, a little bit less, but let's just say it's 1%, and that's taken out of the accumulation value. So the other thing that people never talk about, and agents never talk about, um, most of these riders have a percentage that they grow by. That's that's the bad chicken dinner seminar, seminar pitch of, I can get you 7% or 8%. No, that's the growth on the income rider side. That's monopoly money. But also look at this. It's also increasing the fee by that amount with a lot of these income riders, not all, but a lot of these income riders um, as it grows. So in other words, if you had $100,000 to put in into an income rider and the income rider is growing at 7.2%, and the, the fee was 1% on that income rider, that fee is going to grow by 7.2%. So if you waited 10 years, that fee, when you lock in and turn on the income stream, would now be 2%, if that makes sense. If it doesn't, schedule a call. I'll go over that with you. Bottom line is don't just watch that, that Jimmy Carter-type interest rate grow because it's not interest. It's monopoly money, and, and it's, it's a phantom account. And so the question I got a call the other day, you know, guy has an income rider, he bought it from someone else. I have no idea why. Can you even imagine anyone on the planet buying an annuity other than from Stan the Annuity Man and his fantastic team? I mean, literally, it's a horror story. But anyway, I was talking to him and he goes, so when should I turn on the income rider? So my question is, do you need income? Yeah, I do need income, Stan the Annuity Man, America's annuity agent. Well, then turn it on. Turn it on. 
Remember that with even with income riders, all lifetime income guaranteed products with annuities, you know, you're getting your money back with interest when the when you turn on the life, lifetime income stream. The true value proposition of any lifetime income strategy with annuities, whether it's a single premium immediate annuity, a deferred income annuity, a qualified longevity annuity contract, or an income rider, the true value proposition is when the account is at zero. Because when it's at zero, and you're saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, Stan, what? When the account's at zero, you're in the annuity company's pockets. And they're still on the hook to pay. Up until then, you're getting your money back with interest. You're transferring the risk. So I'm telling people all the time, you, sh you should transfer the risk. Transfer the risk to the annuity company to pay you for the rest of your life. Or if you set it up joint with a spouse or partner, pay them, you and them for the rest of their lives. So if you pass away, the money continues uninterrupted and unchanged for the for the, uh, the spouse or partner. I mean, turn it on. It's the same question that someone says, well, should I take Social Security at, 50, at 65 or should I take it at 70? Well, not a good answer. Obviously, the older you are, the higher the payment with Social Security. The older you are, the higher the payment with an annuity uh, for lifetime income, including an income rider. But you have to factor in those five years or 60 months of payments that you missed while you're waiting for the higher payment. Does it make more sense? As I tell my clients every single day, there's no U-Hauls behind hearses. You can't take it with you. I need you to think about that for a second. Pause. Because you need to spend it. You need to live your life. You've worked hard. It's all about lifestyle. And I've got hundreds of clients that would give a million dollars to feel good for a week. So I would encourage you to turn it on. Here's the interesting part about income riders. The industry loves it when agents sell income riders and don't explain them as... An, I explain everything in depth, and you get the books, and you have, I have videos at the Stan the Annuity Man YouTube channel, and I do podcasts on like this. I'm educating everybody because I want you to understand the good and the bad, the limitations, and the benefits of every single product, and in this case, income riders. But most people are under the assumption when they're sold by somebody else <gasps> that they're getting Jimmy Carter yield, and they like watching it grow but they're watching Monopoly money grow. They're watching a Phantom account grow. They're watching an account they can't access in a lump sum or peel off the interest. The only way to access it is to turn on the income stream. And by the way, when that guaranteed, yeah, you know, that interest rate is growing during the deferral time period, once you turn on the income stream, that Jimmy Carter interest stops. Bing, done, done. So what I don't want you to do is become enamored with that growth I want you to turn it on sooner than later. I want you to tell me, hey, we need income in seven years, and we need, I'd rather you say, we need income in seven years, and we need it to be $2,000 per, uh, per month for the rest of our lives, period. We can reverse engineer that quote, or you can say, hey, I've got $225,000. We want to defer it for nine years. Me and the wife, how much lifetime income can we get from an income writer? We can do that. Either way, you're in control and you can customize the quote. One more, one more key thing I want to talk about is inflation and income riders. There are a couple of products and a lot of rogue agents out there, good people, I'm sure, and I'm sure their wife makes a really nice peach cobbler, but they're, they're misinforming people by saying, well, if you buy my index annuity with my income rider, every time the index goes up, the, the, uh, the income increases by that amount. So if the index goes up 3% or 3.4%, then you're going to get 3.4% increase on your income. <gasps> Sounds fantastic. That's beautiful. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Stand the annuity man. Uh, annuity companies have the big buildings for a reason. Anytime, without exception, that an agent says to you, well, my index annuity with my income writer, uh, when the index goes up, it, inc it increases the income stream by that amount. The annuity company is severely and drastically lowering that initial payment to make up for that potential increase. I mean, typically, it's a six to nine year break even point if you chose the one with a static, you know, the same income amount for the rest of your life as compared to one that could possibly increase with the unicorns and the butterflies chasing themselves and eating at a buffet that serves milk and honey. No. Never buy potential. You remember live in the reality, not the dream? That's the, that's the fun with annuities motto. Live in the contractual reality. You own an annuity for what it will do, not what it might do. And with income riders, buy the stake, not the sizzle.
because you're going to own the contractual realities, not the dream that's being pitched. So when, you, when you're shopping with me, Stan the Annuity Man, for the best income riders, we're going to look at the highest contractual guarantees available, and then I'm going to step in as the, as the top agent on the planet that knows, that's forgotten more than most agents will ever know. <laughs> and I've been around the block a little bit so I can read balance sheets. I'm going to tell you if that carrier can back up the claims. Okay, if they can do that. And speaking of that, now fixed in, fixed index annuities with income riders or fixed annuities in general are all have some some backing at the state guarantee fund level. So each each state has what's called a state guarantee fund. Here's what you need to know about income riders: state guarantee funds don't back up income riders; they back up the accumulation value. So going back to the draw the line down the middle of a page, um, you know, remember that. Right-hand side is the income rider side. Left-hand side is that accumulation value side. The accumulation value side is, is what's covered by the state guarantee fund. Hello. Now, you need to know that, which, which leads to you shouldn't make any decision on an annuity based on state guarantee funds. You make the decision on buying an annuity or an income rider based on the claims paying ability of the carrier. And I have skin in the game with that. I'm not going to put you in front of or recommend a carrier that I do not think can back up the claims. You know, I go in there and look at the bond holdings and the solvency ratio, and I can tell when the son-in-law is buying the bonds. I mean, it's pretty obvious for someone like me who worked at Morgan Stanley and UBS, Payne Weber, Payne Weber and Dean Witter. Been there, done that, can look at it and glance and tell in a nanosecond when, when they're in trouble and they're buying bonds improperly and Wall Street's kind of taking advantage of them. Um, so let's kind of synopsize the income rider thing. First of all, remember, income rider is a future pension that you set up, but it's flexible. You can have it in your IRA, your non-IRA, your Roth IRA. Okay, you can st you can start and stop the income stream if you want. You know, you can do that, or you can change the start date. So let's just go. You you signed the paperwork. The plan was to turn it on in ten years, and you got to year seven, and you wanted to start the income sooner. You can do that. Or if you got to year ten and said, yeah, let's push it two more years. We'll start in year twelve. You can do that. Remember the pricing of life lifetime income is primarily based on your life expectancy at the time you take the payment or life expectancies if it's joint. Interest rates play a secondary role. Let me say it again. Interest rates play a secondary role. I'm going to say it again. Interest rates play a secondary role. Do not come to me and say, well, I'm waiting on interest rates to rise because if interest rates are... Listen, life expectancy drives the pricing train and interest rates would have to significantly move higher for it to move the, move the pricing needle. You can't time it, and that's not a sales pitch. It's just not. You have as much risk of life expectancy tables changing against you as interest rates, in my opinion. So I've been hearing for the at the time of this taping, for the last five years, I've heard the following. Well, I'm just waiting on interest rates to rise because they have to rise. They don't have to rise. Okay, we've been proving that. Can they go lower? Damn right they can, excuse my French. Yes, they can. I hope I'm wrong. I want to go on record that I'm wrong about interest rates, okay? But I'm telling you, don't base your decision on timing interest rate. You're not master of the universe. You're not Gordon Gecko. okay? You don't know when interest rates are going to move. I don't know. Nobody knows. And if they knew, you wouldn't know because they wouldn't tell you, period. So income riders are a great future pension product, period. Um, they're flexible, uh, the fees come out of the accumulation value. You can buy some of them with confinement care type benefits that will double the payment if you get sick or have to go into a nursing home, etc. But all of those are different. We can walk you through those if that's what you want to do. Remember that the income rider percentage that's grown by is not real yield. Jimmy Carter's not in office. That's not some genius and annuity company figuring out how to give you 7% yield on a 1% on a 1% 10 year treasury. It does, but it does grow by that amount only for use for to calculate your first lifetime income payment. I think income riders are great. Um, you know, we probably sell more of them than anybody on the country. We sell them properly. People understand that's monopoly mo monopoly money and phantom account, but they're using it for future pension. They're using that as part of, part of their income floor in combination with a pension if they're so fortunate to have one and social security and any other type of monthly income that's coming in every single month as long as you're breathing. So in a pensionless world where you know less than 10% of private companies offer pensions, and with 10,000 baby boomers reaching age 65 every single day, 
people are looking for income rider or guaranteed income growth, um, income riders are just the most flexible lifetime income strategy available in the world of annuities. And fortunately, we represent all carriers, so we're going to quote all carriers for the highest contractual guarantee. Pretty much all carriers. I think there's one or two that that we don't, and that's our choice. <laughs> so, um, you know, with that being said, uh, I would encourage you to do a couple of things. Go to my site, theannuityman.com, request an income writer quote. Request it. We will get it to you in less than 24 hours. Um, request my books. Fill out your shipping address. I'll ship it to you, no obligation and for free. And schedule a call with me, Stan the Annuity Man. I know I sound crazy on this podcast. I'm happy. I think annuities are great. I think people need to know the truth about them. I think people need more contractual guarantees. And I think people need to transfer risk. And that's the reason we call it fun with annuities. But I also say, you know, we're living the reality, not the dream. And the reality is contractual guarantees. And with income riders, those are contractual guarantees that you can bank on for future income pension needs that you can never outlive. So with that, I'm glad you joined me. This is a weekly podcast. And so I'll see you on next week's Fun with Annuities. My name is Stan, the Annuity Man. Thanks for listening to Fun with Annuities. Please hit the subscribe button and make sure to go to my site at theannuityman.com where you can run your own SPIA, DIA, and QLAC quotes and see a live feed of the best MIGA fix rates in the country and even get indexed and income rider quotes as well. You can also sign up for my six annuity owner's manual books and I'll ship them for free and under no obligation. I also encourage you to schedule a one-on-one call with me, Stan the Annuity Man, so we can have a full discussion of your specific situation. It will be the best brutally factual and truthful advice you will ever get, and that's one guarantee you should definitely take advantage of. So join me next time for the number one annuity podcast on the planet, Fun with Annuities.